The hat and glasses templates should give you a good example of how you can bring your own custom eyewear headpieces and I'm even going to show you how you can add like accessories like piercings in this case. We're also going to take a look at the new vertex trackers which is what I use to attach these dimple piercings and as you can see it gives us the perfect anchor so we can attach I mean anything you want onto individual vertices of the face mesh. To create the beanie, I simply use the head mesh model, which is inside of the assets useful stuff folder. And this is just to give me an approximate of the head so I can have something to design the beanie on top of. Simply right click on the head mesh, go to show in Explorer, and you can easily import this model into any kind of software that you're going to use to create your headpiece. For this example, I created a crown inside of Marvelous Designer. This is just personal preference and I just really like how I can simulate the cloth on top of the head and see the results in real time. For the glasses and the nose ring, I actually used the face visualizer model as a reference. I imported it inside of Cinema 4D and easily created my glasses and my nose ring. Okay, now let me show you how I'm going to use the crown model and the new pair of glasses that I created. First, I'm just going to temporarily disable the beanie pompon, the beanie model itself, and the glasses. I'm also going to activate the head mesh reference mesh renderer. And right now it has a transparent occluder, but I'm just going to use the face default. And for now, I'm just quickly going to deactivate the face mesh mesh renderer, just so they don't overlap. I am simply going to drag in my crown model. And the reason that you cannot see it is because I actually have this scale a little bit messed up. Finding the right scale to move your models across different softwares can get a bit tricky, but in this case I'm simply going to change the scale. I already know that it's 0 0.1 on every axis, and I know that I have to rotate on the Y 180 degrees. Now all I have to do is place it, and then I have to make sure to drag in the model as a child of the filter prefab, uh, just right underneath the nose ring. So whenever I go to the simulator and play the simulation, it attaches to the axis, to the pivot point of the whole filter. I'm going to bring in the new glasses now, and I have the same problem with the scaling. I'm going to reset the position and set the scale to 0 0.01. Also going to rotate these 180 degrees on the Y and just position them where I want them to be. I forgot to make the glasses a child of the filter, but this is just a good example of what it would look like if you do not parent them to the filter prefab. I will go into the head mesh model and deactivate the mesh reference for now. Go under the faces and activate the mesh render for this face. If I bring back the shaded wireframe view, I go into the filter artist panel and then I activate show vertex index. We're going to see the numbers of all of the different vertices of our face mesh model. And let's say for example, I want to add something here right in the middle of the lips. Let's try vertice number 27. So all I have to do is type in 27, click on create. And under the vertices group, we're going to have access to this vertice. And I can then attach anything to this vertice so it is going to follow it throughout the whole simulation. I'm going to do something similar to the dimple piercings and just right click through the object and just let's create in this example, let's create a capsule. It should be huge right now. So I'm going to press R, grab this um, white cube and just scale it down. Press E and maybe rotate it just a bit. I can then hide the vertex index, close the artist panel menu, and if I start the simulator, you're going to see that it attaches pretty well. And just to give you a quick example of how useful this vertex tracker feature is, I added this capsule and I made it a child of the filter prefab. So it is going to follow wherever the face goes. And if I start the simulation, you're going to see that it is following the face, but it is not following the individual vertices. If I stop the simulation around here, you're going to see that the sphere has now changed position. So it might not be able to see it because it probably moved underneath the mesh or it's probably somewhere else. So I truly recommend that you use the vertex tracker index.
The last thing that I have to do is go to the face mesh and actually use this transparent material that comes under the useful stuff folder. Select the face mesh and simply drag this material so we can have a transparent occluder. To see this a bit better, I'm going to deactivate temporarily the skybox. And finally, I will go into the head mesh model, activate it, and also select the transparent material occluder. If I now go onto the shader view, you will see that it is transparent. This is just going to make sure that when you try the filter in the app, if you rotate your head, let's say to the right, like you're not gonna be able to see the back of the glasses or the inside of the crown.